Over the weekend, late Friday nights, early Saturday morning, the state of Kentucky and the city of Bowling Green impacted by the deadly tornadoes that tormented the town and city of Bowling Green, Kentucky. As we welcome you inside Diddle Arena alongside Jay Waltz and I'm Graham Doty. Happy to be with you. And Jay, sometimes it's more about basketball. You have two teams tonight. A lot on the line. They're playing for their communities, universities, and the state of Kentucky tonight. They're meeting for the first time in 34 years. Not sure what to expect from this crowd tonight. A lot of Hilltopper fans that would normally be here are in the process of putting their lives back together after the events over the weekend. I know Coach Rick Stansberry and his team, it's very important for them to come out, put on a good show, and then we're all mindful of everyone who's gone through those struggles. Absolutely, no doubt. So these two teams meeting for the first time since 1987. Western Kentucky, this will be a game for the Hilltoppers. This is an exhibition game for the Center College Colonels. And we're happy to be with you tonight. Western Kentucky at six and four. There's the head coach for the Hilltoppers. It's Rick Stansberry now in his sixth season, sitting on 109 career victories as the head coach for the Hilltoppers. And there's the head coach for the Colonels. It's Greg Mason, 22 seasons now as the head coach for the Colonels. Most wins in program histories and Jay, this is a very good Center College program. They have won their conference championship 11 times out of the last 15 seasons. Not many programs across the country on any level can say that. They're an impressive program. They want to come in here tonight and enjoy this moment. We talked to Coach Mason the other night about his guys doesn't want them to play scared, wants to come in here and attack just like they normally would. Last time Center College did play a Division I team, it was in Rupp Arena, taking on the Kentucky Wildcats back in 2017. Starters today for Western Kentucky, you're looking at Sharp, who easily wins the tip for the Hilltoppers. We're underway from inside Diddle Arena. Starters for the Hilltoppers, Hamilton, Frampton, McKnight, Sharp, and Justice. Starters for the Colonels. Gerald, William Smith, Bowman, and Moore. And a strong start for the Hilltoppers on their opening possession of the game. Probably going to see a lot of that half-court zone offense, uh, defense from center tonight, just not being able to match up size-wise with West Kentucky. Great to see the ball go in on the first possession for Luke Frampton. Smith off the mark on the three. And he touched on the defense. That's something Greg Mason told us. He is a man-to-man -man guy. But last year, due to COVID and so many issues, had to play a zone a lot. How about the start for the Hilltoppers? Burying a couple of threes on their first two possessions. Yeah, Coach, Coach Mason, he's, a, he's an old-school guy, doesn't like to play a lot of zone. Last year, during that COVID year, his team only got to play, I think, eight games and uh, didn't really get to start practice even until January. Didn't feel like he had enough time to install his man-to-man -man the way he wanted to do it. So he played multiple different zones throughout the year and probably will see a lot of those tonight. Here's Hamilton. Hamilton flips one up and in. The Hilltoppers have converted their first three shots of the night. Well, Hamilton's going to be a matchup problem for a lot of people that the Hilltoppers play this year, even throughout conference play, and certainly going to be the case tonight for center. Well, Colonel's head coach Greg Mason told us that he expects Center College to attempt 25 to 33s a game. Even watching them in warm-ups, everybody on the roster shot nothing but threes. Fours, fives, post players, everyone's got the green light. Back underneath to Hamilton. Can you start any better if you're the Hilltoppers? You really can't. They've gone inside, they've gone outside. Um, very balanced attack. And Center College just needs to uh, stop the bleeding right here early, get a stop. Here's Frampton. That's the first miss of the game for the Hilltoppers. Frampton made the first two triples to start this game. So here's Bowman. All he did was knock down 11 threes in the last game for Center College. The Colonels are now 0-5 to start this game. McKnight with a good look. Puts another one down for Western Kentucky. The Hilltoppers three for four from deep to start this game. And Greg Mason, is soon enough, he will call a timeout. It was 17-27 to play in the opening quarter. It's a 13-0 run for the Hilltoppers to start the first two and a half minutes. 
deep ball from McKnight, not something he does a, a great deal of. He's a fantastic mid-range jump shooter. Likes to play off the dribble and get to his spots right around the elbow. Really, really good going to his right, but everybody feeling it right now for West Kentucky in the early going. Yeah, you touch on McKnight. He only has three made threes the entire season coming into tonight, and he buries one early in the first half. 13-0 start for the Hilltoppers, who are 5 of 6 shooting. Colonels 0 of 5. Missing their first five shots. Four of them have been three-pointers. And this is a team for Center College. As a team, they shoot 36% from the outside. Just want to settle down and get into some kind of a rhythm here offensively. Coach Mason's probably drawn up a set this time out. That was Moore on the drive, contested by Sharp. They feed the big man underneath. And this pass is intercepted by Gerald. First turnover against the Hilltoppers. Gerald will fade and fire and hits. And the Colonels are on the board after missing their first six shots. I like the patience right there on the shot fake by Dustin Gerald. Didn't rush that shot. Obviously mindful of the seven foot five Jamarian Sharp in the paint. Hampton misses a three, made his first two since then. He's missed two in a row. Out of bounds, belongs to Center College. Hampton, a guy at Davidson, made 100 threes in a season. His percentages have not been what he'd like them to be so far this year. So great start for him. He's going to try to find some rhythm threes throughout the night to keep that going. Well, he got off to a very slow start as Bowman off the mark. Offensive rebound for the Colonels. Moore had Sharp guarding him, and he said, you know what, I'm going to pass this on to Wayne Williams, who misses the three. Western Kentucky basketball, 16.06. But going back to your point about Frampton, Jay, he was one of 19 in the first three games from three-point land to start this season. Since then, he's starting to find his rhythm shooting at a 47% clip in those last seven games. That's more like it and uh, will be a huge key for them, how well he's been able to shoot the ball as, uh, as the season goes on. Here's Justice. Pretty pass to McKnight. Back to Justice for the corner three. And a foul underneath on Hamilton. This will take us to the media timeout. 14, rather 15-47 first half. Hilltoppers out in front over Center College, 13-2 inside Diddle Arena. Look at the sights in Bowling Green. Bowling Green strong and love BG. Again, this was late Friday night, early Saturday morning. The community and city of Bowling Green in the State of Kentucky impacted by the tornadoes. And Jay, these are shots very close to campus, about a mile or so off of campus. We're, we're lucky that Diddle Arena still has a roof on it, dangerously close right. to campus. And um, yes, yeah, it's, it's awful to see the devastation there. Um, thoughts and prayers with everyone who's suffered loss of life and property over the weekend. And if you would like to learn more or help in any way, you can go to wku.edu to learn more. In this game tonight between these two teams, it's free admission and free concessions. Trying to help out the community here in Bowling Green. Justice is able to maintain it. Go up and he got it blocked. Moore with a block. Here come the Colonels. This is Ring for a three. Miss Badly. That would have been some made basket if Hamilton would have made that. Here's Williams. Center's getting good looks. I think this is, you know, the, the tempo, the last few possessions is kind of how they would like to play. Uh, just getting to see one or two go in. There's Justice. His first made bucket. Fourth triple in the first half for the Hilltoppers. So the Colonels haven't scored in over two minutes. They have opened this game just one of 11 from the field. 
This is a team built around the three-point shot. Here's Bowman. And the Colonels will get it right back. It's tough to get any penetration for center right now against the Hilltoppers defense. And, and even if you do, you got a seven foot five shot blocker in the paint. Jamarian Sharp. Second in the country in block shots this year with 48. He had 261 blocks in two seasons at John A. Logan Community College in Illinois. Went off six blocks in his last game. Gets an SEC opponent. There's another one and a foul on the Colonels. This will be their second. Dustin Gerald back on the floor for Center College. That last possession, that's that's more about the third time he's attacked the lane and shots that in their conference, he's going to be able to get to the rim and finish. But tonight, it's going to be tough to do against Sharp. Jumper at the elbow, off the mark from Hamilton. Well, the Hilltoppers got off on a 13-0 run to start this game. Since then, kind of cooled off a little bit. And you said it, Center College is getting good looks. They have just not been able to knock any down. They're 0-9 from deep. There's a turnover. Gerald on the drive, steps out of bounds. The second one on Center College. They've got several guys that like to attack the, dry, uh, the, the basket off the dribble. Uh, even their post players like to step out, have the ability to put the ball on the floor. Josh Anderson just checks in for the Hilltoppers, senior guard out of Baton Rouge. Missed three games, came back, played very well last time out against Ole Miss, and tonight misses his first shot. Offensive rebound and a foul underneath on the Colonels. Yeah, you and I talked about this before the game. Josh Anderson, one of those guys that opposing coaches look at and like, goodness gracious, this kid, he's been here forever. Um, experienced veteran and a uh, big part of what Western Kentucky will have going moving forward this season. No Coming doubt. off the bench now, started several games throughout his career. but Those are the first two points of the night for Jamari and Sharp. And Sharp is off the floor with Jalen Butts checking in for Western Kentucky, the senior out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Good to see those free throws go down for Sharp. It's the one area he's really struggled uh, this season offensively from the foul line. So not a bad stroke, just, just hasn't, hadn't been able to knock very many down. So good to see him make a couple there. Yeah, you're right. He was 4 of 14 before making those two. So can the Colonels take advantage with Sharp off the floor? Smith misses short. And here's Anderson up top to Hamilton. Steps into a three. If I'm Greg Mason right now with Sharp off the floor, I'm really looking to attack and not settle for jump shots in my offense. Kicks it in the corner. Good look for Justice. Another one for the senior, Cameron Justice. And a whistle stopping the clock with 12.46 in the half. It's a 7-0 run for the Hilltoppers as Center College has not scored in over four minutes. Justice knows what spot to get to on the floor when the Hilltoppers run. He, he loves that right corner, really sprints the lane hard, and that time find himself wide open there on the pass from Hamilton. Noah Stansberry checks in for Western Kentucky, red shirt freshman from Bowling Green. Here he is guarding Smith, and Smith just plows over him for the offensive charge. Welcome to the game, Noah Stansberry. Love it. Stepping in, giving his body up for the team. I love the drive there uh, by R.J. Smith. Not necessary. Didn't, didn't need to dip the shoulder. He could elevate over Nova Stansbury and finish that play. Um, unnecessary turnover there. A little bit of frustration there from R.J. So Stansbury 
will attempt to work the ball up the floor. He and Riggs Stansberry, one of 22 father-son duos in the country. There's Justice again in that corner. That's his spot, Jay. Yes, he's starting to feel it, getting in a good rhythm. He's up to eight points. Colonel's just one of 15, and the shooting struggles continue after the block from Butts. Another three. Center College 0 of 11 from the outside. And certainly not typical the way they're going to shoot the ball throughout the season. Uh, Three-point shot, a big part of their offense, as we mentioned. Just a lid on the basket so far tonight. I'd say so. Shooting 6% from the field, 1 of 17. Kick ball, this will take us to a media timeout. 11.43 in the first half. It is all Western hey. Kentucky Hilltoppers in front of the Colonels, 23-2 at home. Welcome back to Diddle Arena, 11.43 remaining in the first half, and the Hilltoppers lead the Colonels 23-2. Impression so far through the first few minutes, Jay, or what? Well, just not the start you want for Center College, just not able to get any rhythm at all, and there's a great play by Noah Stansberry, the coach's son. When I played at Mississippi State for Rick Stansberry, he called that play right there, blue collar, hard nose, and he loves to see that from his son. Noah's thinking, Dad, come on, what I got to do to get some more playing time? Right. That's it right there. Step in and take the hit. Stansberry playing in his eighth game of the season tonight. Again, one of just 22 father-son combinations playing in the NCAA. Rick Stansberry has to be pleased with his team's start. Hilltoppers did not practice at all yesterday. They were out and about in the community, helping with the cleanup efforts going around Bowling Green. Good ball movement. Brashear buries the triple. Cam Justice has hit a couple times from the right corner. Brashear loves the left corner. I've seen him take that shot several times throughout the season already. He loves to fill that lane. Smith on the drive and a laid whistle and a foul underneath on Western Kentucky. Well, there you go. Sharp not on the floor. That time R.J. Smith takes advantage of it, and he'll earn a trip to the free throw line. Yeah, Smith's game, a really good high post player, got a great first step, loves to finish at the rim and get himself to the foul line. So a lot of times when you start like, like center has and not shooting the ball well from the perimeter, it's the best way to get yourself going offensively, get to the line, see a couple go in, and uh, knock the lid off the basket. Not able to do it just yet. These are the first free throws of the night for Center College. Smith, an 82% free throw shooter. He goes to the line the most of anybody on the team for the Colonels. And the scoring drought continues for Center College. No points in over five minutes. Colonels have not played a game in 10 days. They will not have a home game in the month of December. Yeah, Coach Mason talked about academics being a priority for his young men at center and right in the middle of finals, and they don't even practice for several days at a time during this time of year. There's another miss, that time by Taylor. Colonel's just one of 18 from the floor. Here's a lob, nice pass to Butts. Taylor, Butts. Justice thought about another three, but decided to reward Butts for running the floor. Easy layup. Moore again. Our period continues for the Colonels. 0 of 12 from the outside as you get another look at that nice pass from Justice. Started with a great kick up pass by Noah Stansberry. Sees the wing open, pushes the ball up the floor, and the ball never touched the floor. Wide open layup. You love to see that in transition offense. Frampton back on the floor for the Hilltoppers. Brashear, he made one a moment ago. Off the mark on that one. Wilson had it knocked out of bounds by Anderson. So the Colonels have missed their last 12 shots. They have not scored in seven minutes. 
Who does Center College want to go to? This is a team that almost shoots 50% from the field. Gerald wide open. Another miss. Here come the Hilltoppers. Collision. Brashear charge. Tried to sidestep the defender a little bit, but a great job by center getting back in transition, stopping that run. Again, good looks pretty much on the other end of the floor for center. Just need to see one or two go in. I don't know about that. A tough call on Brashear. His first. This is the 19th meeting all time between these two teams. Western Kentucky leads the all time series 14 to 4. Anderson knocks it away. Here's Stansberry. Brashear. Extra pass up top to Stansberry. Off the mark. He's still searching for his first points as a Hilltopper. He's 0 of 4 this season from the field. Taylor. Off the back of the iron. Butts calling for it. He'll turn and fire. <laughs> Bowman. How about that? First points for Center College in eight minutes. It was a great job attack by Bowman there. Goes right at the defender. Good body control. Somehow gets it up on the glass and gets the roll. And that's maybe the one they needed to see go in. Get a little confidence going, a little bit of flow. They play better defensively. Uh, they gave up a hot start to West Kentucky, but they're able to settle down a little bit on that end. The zone defense is throwing West Kentucky off rhythm a little bit. Um, but just got to get something going offensively here. Bowman, we touched on it earlier. He had a school record 11 three-pointers in the last game for Center College. He was 14 of 20 from the field. Butts loses it. Here's Williams. Williams contacts and another charge. Stansberry does it again. Two on the night. Yeah, you mentioned he's still looking for his first points as a hilltopper. His contributions come in other areas, you know, being the solid ball handler off the bench, running the offense, getting back and making tough plays on the defensive end. It's a 15-2 run for the hilltoppers. But the Hilltoppers have not scored in over two minutes. Dangerous pass there. McKnight to Hamilton. Deathstone, Hilltoppers trying to figure out the zone defense. Shot clock inside of 10. Hamilton just pulls his way to the rim. He's got six. Well, I really like his game. Just a rugged front court player, very physical, loves to attack, but also has the ability to step out to the perimeter and make shots. Just a really, really bad matchup for a lot of teams that West Kentucky will face this season. Colonels now 0 of 15 from three-point land. Look out for Anderson. Just glides up in the air. Timeout, Center College. That was the first bucket for Joss Anderson. It's a 19-2 run for the Hilltoppers over the past seven minutes. It's a 32 to 4 run for Western Kentucky, thanks in large part to that man. Hamilton has six points to lead all scores. Welcome back to Diddle Arena. 32 4 lead for the Hilltoppers. Here is Carter Bowman coming off a sensational game last time out, and he just made a big bucket. For the Colonels as well, Jack. Yeah, not much offense for center in the early going tonight, but here's Bowman attacking the rim, getting his shoulder into the defender and getting the ball up on the glass. He had 11 threes, as we mentioned, in his last game, but he likes to attack as well. And young man took a year off last year, stepped away from the game, realized how much he missed it, came back, and uh, Greg Mason's really, really glad to have him back on his roster. Yeah, we saw Greg Mason over 400 career wins, most in program history. You know, yeah, Coach Mason was a great player as well. Sharp with another block, his second. And here's a lob to Anderson. Second time in a row, Josh Anderson's filled that right lane, just streaks down the floor. I love to watch him run in transition, and he can really, really finish.
Gerald will uncork a three. Watch out. Watch out, Jay. O of 16, Jay, center colleges from three-point territory. Yeah, it's a good three-pointing shooting team, and you know, Greg Mason disappointed on the way his team's been able to start offensively. And, you know, you're, right now you're telling them, guys, let's, let's just settle down, let's play. We've got nothing to lose here. Enjoy the moment. Uh, but, he, but he does want to play a little bit better and uh, get some rhythm going. And whatever happens tonight, this game will make his team better as they go throughout their conference play. But we'd definitely love to get a little rhythm going here in the late, later half of the second, first half. Center College Division Three school located in Danville, Kentucky. Bowman again on a drive, can't finish. But Center College competes in the Southern Athletic Association. They were picked preseason fifth in their conference. They yeah, already 1-0 in their league. Huge win yeah. over Sewanee in their last time out. Frampton, his third triple tonight. He's got nine points to lead all scorers. Anderson with a steal. This is what he does and where he's dangerous. He misses the layup. McKnight with an offensive rebound. McKnight will find Frampton. Back to Anderson. He'll step into a three. Sharp just could not grab the offensive rebound. Williams with the first three ball of the night and the bench for the Colonels explodes. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There's the one. One of 17 from deep. Anderson on a cut. He's starting to heat up, Jay. He's got six points. Yeah, instant offense off the bench. That was awesome to see, wasn't it? You would have thought that Center College just won the national championship after that three. There's another one. The lid's off the basket now, playing a little bit more free like they like they normally would play. Once that first one goes in, right, just you get a little bit more comfortable, you get your confidence. So after yes. going 0 of 16, the Colonels have made two straight. Frampton off the mark on a three. And sometimes the misses become contagious. That rim gets a little tight, but it can be the other way around too. Sometimes one or two go in and Everybody wants in on the party. Well, Greg Mason told us the Colonels will shoot 25 to 30 three-pointers a game. They are already at 18, and we got 440 remaining in the first half. And pretty uh, unsuccessful attack in the basket. They made some really, really nice drives to the hole and just unable to finish with Sharp, the shot blocker, around the rim. So I would think, yes, yeah, they're, they're going to have even more attempts tonight from behind the arc than they normally would, considering considering Sharp's presence. Greg Mason, he told us that he did see Sharp play in high school. Sharp was six foot six as a freshman in high school. That's off the mark. And a rebound for Hamilton. Sharp calling for it, receives it, kicks it out. a good defensive possession so far for the Colonels. Hilltoppers go to Hamilton. Hamilton with a smooth jumper, eight points. Yeah, that's about as good a defensive possession as center's had all night, and Hamilton showing the mid-range game. It's a little bit better offense than it was defense on that time. Stolen away by Hamilton. Look out as he hammers one home. Back-to-back -back buckets for Hamilton. He has a game high 10 points. West Kentucky really getting out in passing lanes and anticipating those steals. If I'm center, I'm thinking maybe a backdoor play right now to loosen up some of that pressure. That's the third block of the game for Sharp. Passes to McKnight, back to Hamilton. It's been a 6-0 run for Hamilton alone. Deep three, buried by Bowman. What's so impressive about Sharp is not, obviously with his size and wingspan, he's a great protector of the rim, but he moves away from the basket just about as any, as well as any other big man I've seen. Um, as you see that on that last possession, getting all the way out to the three-point arch contest. 
There's a foul underneath on Center College. This will be number six on the Colonels, and this will take us to a timeout. 2.52, first half. It's a 45-13 lead for the Hilltoppers. Western Kentucky at the free throw line when we come back. Defense has played well for Western Kentucky. Playing in front of a nice sized crowd. There you see some young Hilltopper fans watching this Kentucky State battle. There's a first steal by Hamilton. Jay Hamilton went on a 6-0 run by himself. A lot of these turnovers on the perimeter from center are instant offense for West Kentucky. You gotta really be careful with those passes from the wing back to the top, uh, especially the way West Kentucky right now, they kind of like sharks smelling blood in the water a little bit. So you've got to really be strong with the ball, anticipate that, that steal and, and look for a backdoor action or look to drive the ball to the perimeter. Although easier said than done with a shot blocker sharp around the rim. Hamilton almost with a double-double already. He has 12 points and eight rebounds as he misses the first free throw. First time he's been at the stripe tonight. What a pickup he's been. Played first two seasons at Boston College. Played last season at Maryland. Played in 31 games for the Terrapins. Played a high school ball at the Cannon School in North Carolina for a good friend of mine, Che Roth. Runs a great program there and won state championships and had a lot of talent come through his program. I know he's proud of Jarius and the way he's played. Good pickup for Rick Stansberry and the Hilltoppers. Almost another steal. McKnight got his fingertips on it. Anderson almost got another one. And there's another block for Sharp. That's number four. What a weapon he is. Justice steps into a three ball. Rebound for R.J. Smith. When you have a shot blocker like Sharp, it allows you to play differently defensively. It allows you to gamble, go for those steals, because you, you know if you get beat, you've got somebody down there that can just erase your mistake. And so they really, really get it on these passing lanes and try to go for that early offense and without having to worry about getting beat. First bucket for R.J. Smith. He was 0 for 5 before knocking that jumper down as we're under two minutes in the first half. Hey, Greg Mason really high on R.J. Smith. Thinks he has a chance to be an all-league caliber player for them and really athletic young man and just having a tough go tonight. Uh, undersized a little bit in this matchup, but great season ahead for him. That's turnover number eight on the Colonels. A lot of new faces checking in here for both teams. Butts returns for the Hilltoppers, as does Stansberry and Sherman Brashear back on the floor. As the season goes on for West Kentucky, you know, uh, West Kentucky looking to develop a little bit more bench. Rick Stansberry looking for some guys to come off the bench, give him a little bit more confidence. And in a game like tonight where, you know, even though you're up 46 to 15 and, you, you know, you're going to win going away, it's still a chance for guys like Jalen Butts and Sherman Brashear, Noah Stansberry to give your coaching staff some confidence and let them know, hey, I can step up and make plays. When is that time period for coaches to kind of have – their lineup and numbers that they want to have in mind. You mean throughout the season? Yeah. I think it fluctuates. I think it, I think it depends. I think you evaluate that every day in practice. Um, and you've got certain guys that you know you have confidence in and they're going to play every single night, but guys do things in practice on a daily basis, on a consistent basis, then that rotation can go from seven or eight to eight or nine. Hilltoppers open up conference play on the road December 30th in Hattiesburg taking on Southern Miss. Here's Anderson. Anderson, eight points tonight for the senior from Baton Rouge. Very under control. Nice balance on the pull up. He's really developed that part of his game. Mostly early part of his career has been a finisher, a slasher, a defender. Great job on the pull up. Nice move from Moore. Just cannot finish. So the Hilltoppers will have the final shot to wrap up the first half. The first half in which they have shot 53% from the field and 7 to 17 from deep. Five seconds. Stansbury is going to launch one. And that will wrap up the first half. Or 
It's out of bounds with eight tenths of a second. Let's see if Colonel's get a shot off. They will not. First half dominated by the Hilltoppers. Western Kentucky leads Center College at the break, 48 to 18 in the first meeting between these two teams in 34 years. Second half about to get underway between Western Kentucky and Center College. 19th meeting all time between these two teams who have quite the connection and tie-in. Diddle Arena named, of course, after Edgar Allen Diddle. He played basketball and football at Center College. Listen, listen to this, Jay. He, he was on the football and basketball teams, and both of those teams that he played on in 1919 went undefeated. It's pretty good. Nice run yeah. for Coach Diddle back in the day at Center College. And Greg Mason talked about what a large alumni base they have here in Bowling Green. They want to come out and put on a, a, a good showing for those fans in, in the area as well. EA Diddle, head coach at Western Kentucky from 1922 to 1964. He was the first coach ever to coach in 1,000 career games at one school. When Coach Diddle retired, his 759 career wins were most at the time of any coach at his retirement. Not only did he coach men's basketball, he coached football, baseball, and women's basketball. Bottom line, he was a busy man. He is in the Basketball Hall of Fame. Here's a turnover. Here's Sharp. How about that flush to begin the second half? Easy finish for the big fella. Not Greg Mason's got to be frustrated there. Coming out of the half, you draw up a set, you want to execute and get a good look and turn it over right away, lead to an easy bucket. Almost another turnover. That knocked down in the hands of Bowman. Got a glimpse of Sharp running the floor as well. We talked about how good defensively he is at the rim, how he can move away from the basket and guard the perimeter, and he can really, really run the floor. Just not your typical seven foot five center, is he? He can move very easily, glide up and down the floor. Now, you know, uh, West Kentucky, the last several years, had Patrick Bassey, the traditional back to the basket player that they can feed and let him operate. Sharp's not that guy, and we haven't seen it a lot tonight because of the zone defense that center's been playing, but he's really, really good. He sets a lot of high ball screens, does a great job of rolling hard to the basket and, uh, and finishing around the rim. McKnight misses short, a rebound for Williams. Bowman just made a three. This time he will pass it to Gerald. He's off the mark. Picked up underneath by Moore, and Moore, <laughs> good idea. Did not want to try to shoot that over Sharp, who has four, four blocks tonight. Nice cut here from Smith with a finish. Good action from center right there, already off to a much better start offensively here in the second half than they did to start the game. Three and a backdoor layup already. McKnight, sharp calling for it. Hilltoppers don't feed the big fella. Instead, Hamilton on the drive, misses short. A rare miss from Hamilton. A lot of centers offensive sets designed to draw sharp away from the basket, make the big fella move a little bit, maybe open up some driving lanes or backdoor cuts for some some of the other players on the Colonel's roster. That was a deep three in a different area, Code. Bowerman misses. Colonel's 5 of 24 from deep. Back to Sharp. <laughs> what a difference maker he is. Six points, five rebounds, four blocks for Sharp. I would like to know uh, how many of his, what percentage of his field goals on the year come off dunks? He's shooting nearly 70% from the floor, and I, I can tell you two-thirds of those are, are dunks right at the rim. Well, you mentioned the 70%. Since Sharp was inserted into the starting lineup six games ago, he's shooting 81% from the field. 81. He almost never misses. Back to Hamilton. Hamilton, again, just playing bully ball. 
Game high 15 for Hamilton. That's where he's really, really good in that mid post area. Very patient. He took a couple of dribbles. And if you're center and you allow a player like Hamilton to have two, three dribbles in the post, he's going to get a bucket. Speaking of buckets, R.J. Smith challenge sharp at that time gets a huge dunk well coach mason told us for the game you know you're going to see rj smith he is as athletic as anybody that will play against all year he can go upstairs with, with anybody we play and you saw it on that possession he challenged the shot blocker there and got the best of him on that finish at the rim there's a three over sharp that's jazz moore he was 0 for 7 from the 4 before making that 3. I'm glad to see center get off to a better start. They're loosened up a little bit, having a little bit more fun with it now. They might not be able to claw back in this game and make it competitive, but they can certainly do some things uh, in the second half here that they can take away from this game and watch on film later and say, guys, look at this stretch we put together against a really talented team. This is really going to help us in our conference. And center College already 10 points scored in the half after only putting up 18 in the first half. There's a foul on Justice. That's his first team foul, number one, on Western Kentucky. Media timeout, 15-39, second half. Western Kentucky, 58, Center College, 28. Our score, the Hilltoppers have made their last four shots, and they are rolling at home tonight at Diddle Arena. It's a 58-28 lead, Western Kentucky over Center College. There's a young Hilltopper fan having a lot of fun. So is R.J. Smith, Jay, after this dunk. You know, Center's been very aggressive. Even early in the first half when they weren't scoring, they were getting to the rim, getting some good looks, and, you know, Sharp erased a few of those that they tried to lay off the glass. R.J. Smith not taking any chances there. Wanted to throw it down, and he got the step on Sharp and was able to finish. Great backdoor action, and I like to see them being aggressive uh, no matter what the score is in this game. Sharp, just not used to situations like that, is he? Second in the country in block shots. There's a turnover immediately coming out of that timeout. Second turnover out of, a, out of a timeout, trying to draw up an offensive set for the Colonels here in the second half. You really want to try to be good as a coach coming out of a timeout. Once you spend your whole timeout drawing up, you really want to take pride in your team executing, and they're not able to do that on that possession. Frampton. Frampton made his first two threes of the night. Since then, he has not, he's only made one other. Another turnover. Justice comes away with it. And he'll lob it underneath to Sharp, and Sharp can't finish. Yep, should have dunked it. Here's a contested three. Williams offline. Brampton, the Davidson transfer. You touched on it earlier. He and Steph Curry, the only two Davidson players. There's another shot made in the corner. But Frampton, Steph Curry, only two Davidson players with 103 pointers made in a season. Anytime you're company. mentioned with Steph Curry, yeah, you're doing something right. Bowman, another block. That's number five for Sharp. It looked like Bowman had a split second down the lane. He had a little crease to the rim, and then Sharp just does what he does. Well, it was a well-designed play, very good execution there, and uh, Bowman thought he had the step, and Sharp just, it, it's different. It, it's one thing to play against a shot blocker. It's, it's, it's a whole different level when you're playing against a guy that's seven foot five and gets off the floor, has great timing like Sharp does. Back to Bowman. Anderson back on the floor for the Hilltoppers. Hamilton, short. Hilltopper 7 of 20 from deep. They've not made one yet in the second half. Here's Wilson. Good defense from Justice, but Drew Wilson with his first basket of the night. Just 
Very patient on the drive by Wilson. A couple pivots and a shot fake and a strong step through, able to get to the glass. Justice will let one fly, rims out. Rick Stansbury would like to see this first unit here get a get into a good rhythm offensively, see his few shots go down, feel good about it, and then get, get some guys off the bench. Lee, another one for Sharp. That's six. He holds the Western Kentucky's single game record, 10 blocks in one game. It's when he had a triple double, just the third triple double in program history as well. Look at this. Yeah, just almost baits him into it. And his hands are down, and you're thinking, I got a pretty clean look here. I think I'll let it fly. Not, not tonight. So Sharp off the floor. How do the Colonels want to handle this with no sharp on the floor? Early in the first half, um, you see the finish here by Josh Anderson. We've seen that before. Early in the first half when Sharp went out center, settled for jump shots in perimeter instead of attacking the basket. I'd like to see him go to the hole with him off the floor at this point. And two possessions, two straight jump shots. That pops out. A couple of really good looks there for the Colonels. Cannot cash in. Rashier made a three in the first half. This time he'll find Sansbury. Frampton dials up a three, halfway down and out. Here's RJ Smith again. The basket will not count. Second foul on the Hilltoppers. R.J. Smith is a really good player for the Colonels. Averaging 15 points a game. You can tell he will be a force to be reckoned with in the Southern Athletic Association this season. Yeah, high expectations for that young man, what he can accomplish. and Will not play against a front line like he'll see tonight the rest of the season. I think it's safe to say Bowman has the green light. It's 3 of 12 from the field. Not quite as hot as he was the last game out against Sewanee where he hit 11 out of 15. Coach, I'm, I'm not so sure if I stood by myself in the gym, I could make 11 <laughs> out of 15 right now, much less in a game with someone trying to guard me. Well, Greg Mason did tell us it was just one of those nights. He just started making them early, and they just kept falling. 40 points at Swanee, a kickoff conference play for Center College. That game was 10 days ago. Center picked fifth in their league. As you mentioned, 11 out of the last 15 conference championships they've won. And Mason, Coach Mason tells us, because we, we've never been picked fifth. So we, we kind of got a little chip on our shoulder this year. We'd like to prove some people wrong. Offensive board for Butts, who will just flip one in. Four points for Jalen Butts. Greg Mason, very good friends with Western Kentucky assistant coach Marcus Grant. Those two have known each other a very long time and helped schedule this game. Here's Anderson. Wow. Caught it in stride, flips it up and in. 12 points for Anderson. Wilson in the corner. It's got to feel good for Noah Ring, the sophomore, out of Gallatin, Tennessee, with his first triple tonight. He's had a few good looks. We're not able to knock one down the first half. And like you said, he's, uh, sometimes just seeing one go down can be, be wonders for your confidence. Anderson on a post up. And his big night continues with 14 points. Getting close to his season high. He dropped 16 against South Carolina earlier this season. That was in Asheville, North Carolina. An eventful weekend for the Hilltoppers' Cameron Justice. We'll have to touch on that when we come back as a foul called. Stopping the clock with 10.34 remaining in the second half. It's a 68-33 lead. Western Kentucky all over Center College. Carson. 
Welcome back to Diddle Arena. 68-33 lead for Western Kentucky. And Jay, this game, as you see, Big Red watching on. This game, tough spot for the Hilltoppers. Coming off a dominating win in Atlanta against Ole Miss, an SEC team. Hilltoppers won 71-48. After tonight, this is what's coming up for Western Kentucky. A big game against Louisville inside Diddle Arena on December the 18th. Yeah, tonight, you, you can say what you want. It's what those coaches would call a classic trap game. And Coach Stansbury would he, he would tell you that he would treat this game like, like any other and prepare for center just like they would anybody else. But that Louisville game, that's a circle your, on your calendar date type of game. And I know everyone in this program, players, staff, fans, community, everybody is ready for that one. Well, those two teams played last year at Louisville. Cardinals won, so the Hilltoppers trying to get paid back this season at home. Anderson had it knocked away, recovers. Back to Butts, off the mark. Rashear had a fingertip on it. Second time tonight, out of a timeout, we've seen center go to the half-court trap, and uh, both times weren't, weren't able to create a turnover, but sped West Kentucky up a little bit. We're able to get the stop. That's something that could be very effective for them in their league play. There's Butts, six points for the DePaul transfer. Played in 89 games at DePaul. Started some games early in the year, had some injuries, and then uh, and Sharp just decided to start playing so well that right. he, he's, he's not giving that starting job back up. But this is the kind of game right here, this part of the game is where a guy like Butts can, you know, do some things out there on the floor to show his coaching staff that they, they can have confidence in him and moving forward to deepen that bench a little bit. A guy like him, I'm talking about, uh, you know, Sherman Brashear, who's on the floor right now. Those guys right there, you know, this is not just garbage time for them. It's a time to do the things that you're asked to do and take care of the ball, make make tough plays, and um, defend and rebound and show that you can earn some more minutes in the rotation. Brashear off the mark. Marshall Taylor's played well. He's made two buckets in a row for the Colonels with a rebound. Three off the mark. Offensive board for Chez Moore. Moore, reverse layup, cannot capitalize. Here's Stansberry, finds Anderson, who scoops one up and is fouled. That's the first foul in the half on center college. Yeah, Josh not able to finish that one, but boy, does he run the floor. I, I, if there's any young players out there watching tonight, it just, if you run the floor like Josh Anderson, you, you play with good guards, they'll reward you for it. I love to see it. And, and, uh, you mentioned young players. I'd like to give a shout out to some, some young men that I coach at Lipscomb Academy Middle School. And guys, that, that's right there. When we run transition offense and I tell you to run the floor, that, that's what I'm talking about right there. The Mustangs, how's the season going so season's far? Season's going well. Yeah, very talented team. We're undefeated at this point in the season. Won our holiday tournament this past weekend. So a lot of big things ahead for us. I love coaching those young men. They're uh, a joy to be around every day and they soak it up and uh, got some special, special talent. Josh Anderson now up to 16 points. That's a game high. That ties his season high against South Carolina. And now Anderson will have a foul. The fourth in the half on the Hilltopper, second personal on Anderson. Touched on it earlier, that South Carolina weekend, and for Anderson with his big game against South Carolina, but also for Cameron Justice. He got married on Saturday in Kentucky. Then he had to hustle over to Asheville, North Carolina, a couple hours away, and he played on Sunday at 4 p.m. How about that? I love the story of, of Justice, you know, with COVID. And a lot of guys throughout the country have, you know, taken advantage of, you know, an extra year. And he's a guy who thought his career was over, had some very special moments as a hilltopper here throughout the years and, you know, was working and, and decided, hey, you know what, I'm not done with this game. I can, I can, I've got more to offer and I can always go and get a job. And uh, I've probably done the exact same thing. Now, I don't, I don't know if my wife will let me get married and play the next day, uh, <laughs> cut the honeymoon short, but. Uh, she's obviously very supportive of him and what he's doing. There's a block for this junior, Isaiah Kozar. Here's Stansberry in the corner to Frampton. He's gonna take a baseline where he's fouled. 7.58 remaining in the second half. This will take us to immediate timeout. 
Hilltoppers. 72-37 lead for Western Kentucky. Coming off a big win against Ole Miss. Trying to make it two in a row tonight. Isaiah Kozart getting some minutes in the second half. Hilltoppers in front, 72 to 37. Nine blocks tonight for West Kentucky. Jay and Kozart with his first one of the night. Yeah, another one of those bench guys for Western Kentucky that, you know, trying to show the coaching staff what he can do. You know, block shot, a big rebound, and um, played a great high school program, Madison Central and Richmond High School teammate of Center College's Dustin Gerald. Great program, one of the very first players when I was coaching Lipscomb University uh, around the year 2000 probably. It was, it was a guy from Madison Central and played for Allen Fellhouse there, a great coach, has had a program there and done special things over the years. Well, Cozart was the Kentucky Gatorade Player of the Year and he set the Kentucky State record with 716 blocks. So just think of all the damage that Kozark and Sharp can do defensively for the Hilltoppers. That's out of bounds. And those two guys have ruined a lot of dreams for some offensive <laughs> no players doubt. over their careers, no right? No doubt. I haven't had a lot of turnovers. Hilltoppers have six. 15 turnovers now on the Colonels. That's above their season average, which is 10. There's a press for the first time. Rashir falls down, ends up in the hands of Kozart. He'll hammer one home. A little bit sloppy there by Bashir, with all a near turnover, but right into Kozart's lap, and sometimes things just go your way. Jumper for Smith, short, and a rebound for Hamilton. That's his game high, 11th. Back-to-back double-doubles for Hamilton. Quite sure that won't be his last of the season. He's got three this season. Brashear misses long. Bowman draws a foul. Well, in the first half, we saw Stansberry take two charges. That time he couldn't get his feet set. Trying to get another one. Uh, I love Bauman attacking in transition. He's a fearless young man. He's, he's obviously a, a, a great three-point shooter and their floor general, but in transition especially, when he gets that defense back on their heels, he, he loves to get his shoulder into the defender and try to create the contact and go strong for the finish. He's listed at 5'10". Might be a little generous. There's a nice lob, though, to R.J. Smith, who's had a big game tonight for Center College. Got off to a slow start. He's picked it up here in the second half, and you can see some flashes of brilliance from him, especially around the rim, finishing plays like that. Step back jumper, Hamilton. Another rebound for Taylor, his fourth. Almost turns it over. Banks is in for the first time and turns it over. Here's Justice. Justice, nice pass. Count the bucket for Kozar. Super job of Kozar just running the floor and uh, extremely heads up, unselfish play by Cam Justice. Left hand pass off the dribble on the move to the cutter for the dunk. Love it. Kozart, four points tonight. He's only played two minutes. Definitely made an impact in those two minutes. Gets the friendly bounce on the free throw. Shoot his roll. Colonels have made one of their last seven shots. They're shooting just 27% from the floor. There's another turnover knocked away from McKnight. Hamilton with the lob. 17 for Hamilton. Again, one of those turnovers on the perimeter by center that just lead to instant offense. There is no defense right there for that, that kind of turnover. There's nobody back, and it's just a it's just an easy layup. Banks drills a three. This second. There's another basket and an and one opportunity for Kozart, making the most of his minutes. 
Three minutes, Jay, and he's got seven points. Yeah, he's running the floor. He's got his hands ready. He's anticipating. Good soft hands and able to go up and elevate and finish through the contact. So Center College touched on it earlier. They will not have a home game in the month of December. They, they're going to have a long road game uh, coming up next. They are playing William Peace next, which is in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm guessing they're probably not uh, chartering a jet there. It's going to be a long bus ride of uh, Division Three level. Sometimes that's, uh, that's what it's about in the small college teams, and you, you got to. A lot of these guys doing it for the love of the game. Do you miss those days, the long bus rides? No, I miss the being <laughs> around the guys. Right. I, miss the, right. I miss the locker room. I miss the practices. Um, but that long bus ride, especially after a loss, Ooh, those are rough. For the birds, right? Right. Well, Banks wants another one. That's off the mark. That's his first miss from the outside. McKnight with a pull-up jumper at the side of the rim. We haven't talked much about McKnight tonight. He missed that jumper right there, but that, that's his sweet spot, that mid-range jumper. And uh, he is one of the best in college basketball at that at that part of the game. And Coach Marcus Grant and I, assistant for West Kentucky, we were talking for the game. And Marcus and I played together at Mississippi State in the mid-'90s, and, and I was talking to him about McKnight. I was like, you know, I love his game. He's, he's that old-school game. And Marcus is Agreed. He said, oh, yeah, yeah, he could have played with us. So a throwback. And, Jay, you look at his line tonight. He's on the verge of a triple-double. Nine points, nine assists, and eight rebounds. Never would have known that if you if you'd not read that stat line. He's been so quiet, you know, but you look at his stats throughout the year. He, he does it all. He's the floor leader for Western Kentucky, leads the team in minutes, which to me is one of the biggest indicators of his value to the team. Your coaching staff's got more confidence in him and, than anybody else on the floor as you see him attacking the rim right there, going to his strong left hand. So now he's got 11 points. He is definitely on triple-double watch. So prior to this season, Western Kentucky had only had two triple-doubles in program history. Sharp has one earlier this season. There's a foul off the ball on the Hilltoppers. That'll be the sixth foul on Western Kentucky. So that would be fascinating to watch McKnight towards the end here. So in all of program history, two, do, uh, two triple doubles for the Hilltoppers. They could potentially have two this season tonight. Yeah, never once tonight felt like uh, McKnight was forcing the issue or playing out of control. He just runs the show, gets everyone involved. Great rebounder for from the guard spot. And obviously has the ability to, to get in traffic and make some plays at the rim. Takes a hard fall, appears to be good to go. So he just grabbed a rebound. That's rebound number nine. So he's sitting on nine rebounds and nine assists to go along with his 11 points. I'm pulling for him. Let's get it. Justice short. He's two of six from deep tonight. Eye off the window, that was Stewart that can't finish. Frampton from deep. So that was a rebound for McKnight. So he has the double-double. He needs one more assist for the triple-double. This could be it right wow. here. Finds Justice, and Justice will lay one up and in. And I don't know if that's an officially, because because uh, Justice bounced it one time, but if you're to score, Score official score tonight. Come on, you got you got to give that to him. My man needs that dime. Got a timeout call on the floor with 3:21 remaining in the second half. It's a 7-0 run for the Hilltoppers. It's an 88-42 lead, Western Kentucky over Center College. Timeout on the floor. We'll step aside and be back with more from Bowling Green. So Davion McKnight just records the fourth triple-double in program history, the second this season. You see his stat line tonight. And, Jay, you're talking about Western Kentucky's played basketball for decades, hundreds of years. 
Two lot, double doubles this season, or triple doubles this season. A lot of great players have come through Dill Arena over the years and played here, and uh, uh, for him to be only the second in history to, to achieve that, um, very impressive, and the crowd acknowledges that tonight. They know the history behind this program, and they're, they're a very knowledgeable fan base and very appreciative of what he's been able to do here tonight. And that last pass you just saw to Justice, that was assist number 10 for his first career triple-double. And after that, Coach Stansberry wanted to put in five new faces. As we approach the final three minutes inside Tittle Arena, there's another three. That is Woldridge, who just checked in for the first time, and he buries his first shot of the night. Colonels tonight, 9 of 37 from deep. They missed their first 16 shots. There's Conrad that misses short. Conrad in for the first time for the Hilltoppers. So another timeout called on the floor. We'll take one with them. 242, second half, 88 45, Hilltoppers in front. There you see Josh Anderson has had a big night. He's got 18 points to lead all scorers. Taking it in on the Hilltopper bench. Got some ice on his right knee. Yeah, here he is. Uh, I didn't see anything on that last play that showed me where the injury might have occurred. Hopefully that's just an ice pack for some soreness and stiffness and uh, that, that young man's going to be able to return. And we got a big one coming up next. You'd hate to to lose someone to injury in a game like tonight. Yeah, for sure. And you could see the reaction from Rick Stansberry. He was right next to Anderson after Anderson told him about his right knee. So something to watch and monitor for sure. But you are right. The Louisville Cardinals coming up next on December the 18th. That'll be right here inside Diddle Arena. Sure be a great atmosphere. Big crowd for that one. Stansberry's back on the floor. There's a three by Olden off the mark. Cozart with an offensive rebound, and this will be a jump ball. Arrow sticks with the Hilltoppers. So Tyler Olden. Freshman guard out of Scottsdale, Arizona, is in for the first time tonight. And he already has two three-point attempts, and he misses short. Hey, he says, I'm coming to get mine. I don't practice this hard every day just to right. come out here and swing the ball around the perimeter. I'm going to fire it up there. Conrad in as well for the Hilltopper. Sophomore from Indiana, fourth game this season for Conrad. Top side three, rattled home for Bush. That's the 10th triple for Center College tonight. Finally got untracked a little bit offensively. Saw some shots go down. And again, moving forward, this game will help them. I know they don't feel great, especially about the way they started. We'd like to have the start of this game back and be able to do a little bit better. But, you know, um, they'll be able to move forward in their league with some confidence after tonight, seeing the ball go in the basket a few times, especially here in the second half. They've only been outscored 40 to 30 in the second half. A three off the mark from Banks. One minute. Loose ball with under one minute remaining and a foul called with 57 seconds left in the second half. Seventh foul on the Hilltoppers. So this will be free throws coming up here for center college. They're over three tonight as a team at the line. This is Bush off the mark. Colonel still on the hunt for their first made free throw tonight. Bush is a freshman from Union, Kentucky. Goes one out of two. Oh, 
So Western Kentucky on the verge of picking up win number seven this season. These two teams meeting for the first time since December of 1987. Last time Center College won in this series was all the way back in 1930. Holden, another three, that's off the mark. Under 30 seconds left in the game. Do the Colonels want to attempt another shot? This is Blair up top to Bush. Blair kicks it on the wing. Three ball on the way. Got it. Wooldridge, his second triple. So this should do it. Stansbury will dribble it out. 90 to 52, Western Kentucky will knock off Center College to pick up win number seven this season. Jay Walton will be joined by Hilltopper head coach Rick Stansbury. You see him visiting with Greg Mason. And with this win tonight, Rick Stansbury, this is win number 110 in his career as the head coach at Western Kentucky. 20th season overall, being a head coach for Rick Stansberry. For the Hilltoppers, two wins in a row. Really dominated this game from the get-go. It was a 13-0 run for Western Kentucky in the first couple minutes, and the Hilltoppers did not let the foot off the gas and going on a cruise to winning 90 to 52, two wins in a row before their showdown against the Louisville Cardinals at home later this week on December the 18th. Up next for Center College, Colonels are four and eight this season. They will play on the road this weekend at William Peace, which is in Raleigh, North Carolina. So with this win tonight, Western Kentucky improves to 15 and four all time against Center College. Again, these two teams meeting for the first time in 34 years tonight. So Rick Stansberry joining Jay Walton. We'll send it over to Jay who is with Rick Stansberry. Jay, take it away. Coach Stansberry, toppers win easy tonight. But the big story is the fans of Hilltopper basketball here in Bowling Green and West Kentucky had a tough few days. What did it mean for your team to come out and play well for them tonight? Well, hey, for, for a couple of hires again, nobody was thinking about what's been going on in Bowling Green for the last, you know, three days. Uh, it was good for our team, had some excitement. But again, if y'all been around town much, you can see our town is really, really struggling from a lot of destruction. And again, what if we can do as a team, that give a little energy and motion and spirit back, it was good. And the fans came out tonight. You know, we gave an opportunity for the fans to have a free ticket and fed them free, and that was good. We had a good turnout. Well, I know this program means a lot to the people in this area, and you're mindful of all those folks that have been struggling, but big game coming up next. I know you'll you'll tell me you hadn't been thinking about it, but I can I know you've had this day circled on your calendar for a while. How do you get ready for Louisville, Power Five opponent, in-state rival coming in here next? Well, first off, they're a really good basketball team. Right. That's number one. Uh, I don't think we have to do anything special to get ready from a motion. You know, our guys will be ready, our fans will be ready, and I like where our team's playing. Uh, we've been we've been pretty good. We're starting to get a few guys back now. We've been, you know, Josh was out for three games, Jarius was out, Cam was out early. We keep getting these guys back and get some rhythm. I like the way our team's playing right now. Coach, you seem to be in a good rhythm. Best of luck against Louisville coming up next. Thank you, Big J. All right. Yes, sir. That's it with Coach Rick Stansberry here at Dill Arena. Graham, back to you. All right, thanks, Jay. So for Jay Walton, I'm Graham Doty saying so long from Diddle Arena, Bowling Green, Kentucky. Final score tonight, Hilltoppers knock off Center College Colonels, 90-52. to All games airing on the ESPN Network, streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.